Hello, my name is Joey Moore, and today I'll be presenting my student research project, Music and Love in France, an Annotated Playlist. The goal of this project was to explore French themes and narratives throughout the medieval, renaissance, and baroque eras. I chose this topic because love is the most universal experience. Everyone you know, meet, and even the people who pass you by on the street will one day fall in love. But where did love come from? And why is love viewed and experienced in the ways we perceive it today? That is the question I will be exploring today. So in every culture of the world, you can find European influence. However, the most influential European culture is the French culture. French culture has never ceased to astonish the world. France always seems to excel at anything they choose to include in their very diverse national identity. In How the French Invented Love by Marilyn Yalom, she states that love occupies a place in their national identity on par with fashion, food, and human rights. But why is France known for being the country of love? At the center of the French view of love is passion. The French feel that passion is the most important thing in the human experience. However, in this context, passion doesn't just mean head over heels desire. It also means grief, suffering, and heartbreak. An idea we will explore for much of this presentation is the unique view of the French people that the dark themes of love are just as important as the lighter themes. And secondly, eroticism. The French people have a very unique view on the erotic nature of man. While some cultures over time have grown to stigmatize sexual desire, the French have embraced it as a fundamental part of what it creates the experience of love. It is a manifestation of the passion felt between two people who are in love. Marilyn Yalom, later in her book, states, A French man or woman without desire is considered defective, like someone missing the sense of taste or smell. This quote goes to show the importance of love in the French culture and the place it holds in the hierarchy of the human experience. The medieval period was a time of kings, courts, and dynasties. And with kings and courts comes the birth of Amour Couture, better known in our modern time as courtly love. The Amour Couture is defined as a highly conventionalized code that prescribes the behaviors of ladies and their lovers. However, this took on a new form in music. During the end of the 11th century in South France, we begin to see the birth of the troubadours. These were French poets who were highly favored in royal courts for having a freedom of speech that the everyday commoner didn't. In historical context, Troubadour's most influential impact in the role of love was the shift in how women were treated and viewed. During this time, women were often used as objects or tender for business transactions or as a sacrificial lamb given off to wed to unite two kingdoms. The Troubadours, however, reframed women as something that should be sought after or a prize to be won. They achieved this through their songs known as chansons. Chansons were monophonic songs in which the focus was the poem or story being told. Often in the chansons of the troubadours we see a common narrative. The courtly lover would fall in love with a woman who was more often than not forced into a marriage of some kind, often to royalty. The courtly lover is seen as a slave of passion and existed to serve his lady. This narrative brought about the age of chivalry, a culture that demanded respect for women, an ideal that hadn't existed previously in the culture. Bernard de Ventredorn was a prominent troubadour of his time who came from a castle of low breeding in Limousin, France. At a young age, Bernard's father taught him music and found that he was quite gifted. Shortly after, he became the singer for the Viscount of Ventredorn, a nobleman of his area. However, this did not last long as Bernard fell in love with his wife and ran away with her. Some say this is the origin of the narrative of the courtly lover. Convey la Luzetta was a famous chanson of the time 
even making an appearance an appearance in the opening of Paradiso in Dante's Inferno. The narrative of this story is that of a courtly lover who meets his love at a bridge and in an outburst of emotion expresses his love. However, his love, who is married and wants to be a good woman, flees from him. The courtly lover, struck, struck and overwhelmed with heartbreak, in despair, proposes to go into exile if his lady does not show him mercy. In line with the narrative of the courtly lover, the main character is tortured by his passion for his love. Marilyn Yalom states in her book that the courtly lover is an important narrative in the idealization of love in French history. The narrative embodies the passion we see, as discussed earlier. We see here that suffering and love go hand in hand. Elom later in her book discusses that French love is so pervasive because it includes, it includes these darker elements. The suffering of the courtly lover emphasizes how precious real love is and how it should be relished while it lasts. The Renaissance, although a dark time in French history, still offers many innovations in French culture. Whereas the chanson in the medieval era was a monophonic song with only one singer, in the Renaissance, the birth of polyphony evolved the chanson into a standard secular song of the time with four and later even six singers. We also see a newfound appreciation for the union of poetry and music with the revival of antiquity and the birth of humanism. Some say the humanists of the time realized that for the ancients, Music and poetry were intimately united. During this time in history, we also see the invention of the printing press, which made music more widely available and became even more of an avenue to influence the masses. During this time, we also see a newfound appreciation for the poetry of Christine de Pisson, an influential poet who challenged misogynistic ideals in society of the time. Known in his time as the finest melodist of the 15th century, Gauss Bichon was a well-known writer of the chanson. Much of his chansons explored new themes in love. They often were written about unrequited love with a sad and melancholy tone. The song we will be looking at today is translated as Anguishing Grief. This is a poem written by Christine Passon expressing the grief felt by a mourning wife. Grief in reference to love was a strangely popular theme of the time, used to highlight the precious and fleeting nature of love. This period was an instrumental influence to French love. The exploration of new themes in love helped to mold the perception of love during this time. Writers and musicians alike explored the relationship between the lover, the beloved, and the meaning of love. However, in this sense, we're not speaking of the meaning of love in a literal sense, rather the meaning of love as it is expressed and felt between lovers. This led much of the music of the time to be centered around themes such as heartbreak or loss, occurrences that remind you not to take love for granted. In my paper, I speak about how I feel that accepting love can and eventually will lead to heartbreak or loss, helps us to be in the moment and appreciate that the time we have with our love. Lastly, we further see a shift in women's role in love. In the narrative of lovers, women in this period are no longer simply being chased by men. Now there is a mutual love between partners with women containing just as much passion as men. The Baroque era was a time of pros prosperity for France, especially French music. For this period, we will be focusing on the French air. 
The French air is defined as a courtly love song much like the chanson of the troubadours. However, in the narrative of the French air, rather than being tortured by passion for his, for his love, the lover often complains of her harsh treatment, at times even insulting her, claiming that she is inhumane, unfaithful, and aloof all while lamenting her rejection. In a few airs, he either tries to persuade her to love him in return or celebrates their mutual love. Airs were an extremely prominent genre of this time, being split into subcategories. These categories were courtly airs, drinking songs, dance airs, serious airs, chassinets, also known as little songs, Brunes, which were heirs with any pastoral reference, and light heirs. To simplify, the air overall was a solo song mostly written in binary form that varied depending on the context and contents of the song. French airs were polyphonic polyphonic songs usually composed in binary form. Although all genres gained popularity at one point or another, the serious airs became what was known to be the finest musical genre for solo voice and accompaniment in the 17th century. This brings us to Mitchell Lambert, who was the most famous writer of the serious air. As a child, Lambert was chosen to work for King Louis younger brother and over time earned great prestige. Lambert's music explored all aspects of love and were eventually split into four categories. These being painful love, bittersweet love, enticing love, and joyous or pleasurable love. These categories also split his style into two categories, often painful and bittersweet being written in the forms of serious airs, while enticing, joyous, and pleasurable love were written in the form of light airs. Our last song of the presentation, Vous Mepris Chaque Jour, is a bittersweet, serious air. The lyrics of the air translate to, Your contempt every day causes me a thousand alarms, but I cherish my fate, although it is rigorous. Alas, if my ills I find so many charms, I would die of pleasure if I were happier. For this slide, I wanted to include a piece of writing for my paper, which I feel articulates this best. I chose this example because I find it interesting that it contrasts its predecessors and that it doesn't paint the beloved or his lady as a goddess-like figure who could, who could do no wrong. It's also thought over time the concept of either the lover or the beloved needing to be seen as an imperfect being is no longer needed. The French have, in essence, found a way to romanticize love while including the negative aspects on both sides of the spectrum. The example of this we see here is that despite the beloved's contempt for the lover, is still passionately drawn to his beloved. During this time period as well, we also see with the French air was the beginning of an expansion of the view of love as well as the ways that it can be felt and experienced. In the previous slides, I have discussed how these narratives affect their contextual time periods, but how have these narratives affected our modern day? Many of these narratives can be seen in modern day media, especially in movies and TVs. Some of these examples, some of the examples I have found are Ross and Rachel from Friends, with Ross being the courtly lover who suffers for his beloved Rachel, The Notebook, a story of grief and the loss of a man's wife who remembers and retells the story of their love, and Beauty and the Beast, 
where the characters begin the story with such contempt for each other, then grow fond. Next, the modern day roles of men and women in relationships seem to emulate very much the narratives we see in these time periods. The boy who chases the girl, the girl who plays hard to get, and many more. Here we also see a shifting power dynamic in relationships rather than men simply owning their women. And lastly, taking the good with the bad. French love embraces the suffering and hardships of love, which has become a modern day truth. It is seen as a glorious thing to suffer for or with your love and overcome challenges, which has come to be seen as something that strengthens love. In conclusion, I would say that the reason France is known as the country of love is that together they taught each other how to love. Oftentimes in history, we see morals and ideals taught through the arts such as storytelling and music. Here we can see starting in the medieval period that teaches men to, to romance and chase after women with respect and passion through the chasson, while simultaneously teaching them through storytelling to respectfully accept rejection. In the Renaissance area, in the Renaissance era, we see an exploration of what gives love meaning by using the darker sides of love to emphasize the intensity of passion at which love can be felt. Then finally, in the Baroque era, we see through the art of the French air, the romanticizing of the imperfections of love and a deeper narrative within the French society about all aspects of love. I believe that this exploration and appreciation of love throughout France's history is what weaved love into the fabric of their society. Thank you.